Hey, let's uh, let's check out this tweet from our good buddy Anthony Castrovince. Uh, he says, "Here's a very high quality FOMA photo of former St. Paul Saints co-owner Bill Murray hugging Dale Strawberry as the Saints retire Strawberry's number 17." Wow, it's like I'm right there, Anthony. That's that's a very <laughs> very good photo you got there. Did you have an extra long lens for that? Absolutely, yeah. It's like you're right there with me on the <laughs> roof of CHS Field. Uh, uh, it's a very Zapruder film-esque uh, work by your boy there. Yeah, but it was a great uh, weekend in St. Paul. Uh, Daryl Strawberry played 29 games with the St. Paul Saints in 1996 uh, at a time when no affiliated team would touch him. They were that. independent at the time. And uh, that led to him. He, he went bonkers for 29 games. The Yankees signed him. He won the World Series three times with the Yankees after that. And uh, so they honored him uh, for those 29 games uh, by retiring his number this weekend. And uh, they also honored their original owners, Bill Murray, uh, Mike Beck were in that group. And uh, it's been 30 years of, uh, of, of keeping baseball alive there in St. Paul, which is pretty cool. And yeah. there's a great, by the way, there's a great Netflix documentary about Mike Beck comes out next month uh, called the Saint of Second Chances. So people want to check that out. Okay. We'll definitely be looking for that. Meantime, you recently wrote an article on MLB.com that major league baseball has seen an increase in attendance since the new rules came into effect this season. Tell us more about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a 9% uh, increase uh, at this stage of the season, and we're on pace for our biggest increase since 1998, which was the year, you know, the most recent expansion year, and, of course, the, the great home run trace chance yeah. between uh, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. So, um, you know, the rules are part of this. It's the rules. It's the schedule, because interleague games are more popular than intra-league games, and we have more interleague games this year. Uh, it's surprise teams, uh, COVID's no longer a public health emergency, all these things combined. But you see right there, here's the impact of the new rules right here. Games are 25 minutes shorter, and you see people going to more games on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. The thought being that, you know, if you have a better idea of when the game is ending, because it's not just game times are shorter, it's also the variance of game times is is lower and so you have a pretty good idea of when you're getting out of there and you can go to a game without disrupting your sleep schedule or your kids sleep schedule etc and i think people have gravitated towards these ball games as they've you know digested the new rules and their impact you know more people on the base pass more action on the base pass the things that people told mlb they wanted to see shorter games and more action they are seeing and you seeing the, you see the increase there as the season has gone along man now now anthony some had concern that there would be a spike in the pitching injuries because of the pitch clock. But you wrote about in your article on MLB.com that that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, it's a valid concern because we have an injury epidemic on the pitching side in this game, and we have for decades. Now, to worry too much about the pitch timer speeding things up and causing more injuries is kind of counterintuitive because the game had slowed down dramatically over the last couple of decades while injuries rose. So Pitchers had all the time in the world between pitches, and they were getting hurt. Uh, it's it's more about velocity and spin and the obsession the industry has with that as opposed to the pace of the game. And you see here, we are actually down year over year uh, on the pitching injury front. What, any way you slice it, whether you take it from the voluntary spring training report date, whether you take it from the start of spring training games, whether you take it to the same number of games in the regular season, injuries are down. Just in the regular season through day 124, a decrease of 46 IL placements. So no doubt, we've got a worrisome trend when it comes to pitching injuries in right. this industry. There's something like 25% of top pitching prospects have had Tommy John already. Um, but I don't think the pitch timer is, you know, causing any alarm in terms of increased rate on what was already a, a devastating rate of injuries. And Anthony, the league has also seen studies that show how shorter games have helped players recover faster and play more games. Tell us more about that. Yeah, we looked into this, and uh, this was something I kind of wondered going in the season, right? If, if you're off your feet another half hour or whatever it is per day over the course of 162, that can make a difference. And I've heard this from, from players and managers throughout the course of the season. I remember Rocco Baldelli saying, you're getting a better version of that guy walking in the room each day when you have these shorter games. And you look here at, we've got 60 players on pace to play 155 games or more as of right now. Last year, there were only 26. So we've wow. more than doubled that pace so far. I mean, that, that could change in the, in the dog days and the home stretch, but we'll see. Um, but right now we have nine players on, place, on pace to play all 162. That would be the most since 1980. You see the Braves have an outsized role in this, and they have a tradition of that in this era, this championship era they're in, uh, where their guys play every day. And so we thought it'd be interesting to ask some, some members of the Braves, you know, 
how do you compare this year to previous years? Guys who play every day, like Austin Riley played 159 uh, games last year. And he said that he just feels springier. His legs feel springier in the late innings now than they did Ooh. last year. And he also made an interesting point that when when you don't have the extreme defensive shifts, he's not moving around as much as he wants to. The Braves calculated he moved around 45 miles last year just in the course of shifting. Um, now, that's you divide that by 162. It's not a huge impact, but I think every little bit counts when you're talking about a, sure. a six-month regular season, the two months of spring training. I mean, these guys are on their feet a lot, so every little bit helps. Now, players across the league have seemed to adjust extremely well to the pitch timer. How big of a factor do you think – the pitch clock has had on major league players thus far. Yeah. So violations, uh, it was already a pretty good adjustment from the beginning of the season because we did have that month of spring training games. We started out in the first batch of 100 games with 0.87 violations total combined for the two teams per game. But look where that's at now, Roflo. In the last 100 games, you're basically seeing one violation every three games you watch, you know, on average. And pitchers on average, have had about six to eight seconds remaining on the timer when they go into their motion. So this whole narrative about we got to add time to the timer for the postseason, I mean, it looks like a bunch of hooey to me because A, <laughs> the pitchers have had enough time, and B, I mean, violations are kind of a non-factor yeah. uh, on measure. Mm -hmm. So this worry about, you know, bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs, two strikes, and an automatic strike is going to decide a postseason game. I mean, it hasn't happened yet in the regular season. It seems unlikely to happen in the postseason. Uh, Anthony, what I'm gathering from your article is that it's almost like some of the fans on Twitter that were complaining about it didn't know what they were talking about. Is that what you're telling me? The only thing people on, on Twitter or X or whatever it's called should be complaining about is my photography. That's what that should be the okay. focus. We should be complaining about that. All right. I am shocked that they didn't know what they were talking about. Shocked, I say. Anthony, great stuff as always, man. We'll talk to you soon.